This is Alan Tietrith, and today we are playing Soul Blazer. And first off, as you can tell, my microphone finally came in, so I should be a lot more clear this time. Still a little bit muddled, but that's probably a weight issue. I'm working on that as well, but it's going to take a bit more time. Anyway, Soul Blazer. This is a Super Nintendo adventure game. Uh, very similar uh, to, uh, oh, what was the next here? Act Razor. And that, uh... In Actraiser, you played as the master, trying to bring like the world back after it had been destroyed. Here, you play as the, the master's, I guess, most trusted assistant? Lackey? <laughs> However you want to say it. Uh, unlike Actraiser, though, which is mostly side-scrolling with some sort of Sim-esque traits, this is basically straight-up Zelda-style adventure. Uh, overhead view, attack in four directions of the sword, magic. Okay. Yeah, sadly the intro is basically just text, so I don't feel bad about talking over it. In any case, though, uh... Well, I should mention I'm in a place where the air conditioning kind of just kicks on at random, so if you hear it come on, I don't have a way around that. And <laughs> Again, I'll figure something out in the future, but for now... Let's see. Okay, yeah, story of the king basically finds an inventor to summon, who, to build a machine to summon the devil. Because uh, the king wants to make a deal with the devil. In the end, he makes a deal. I think it mentions it on the next page. Yeah. The king gives a death toll all the living creatures in the world for a gold piece each. Which, you know... I don't know. That seems awfully low in price for every living creature in the world. And you really think about it. Does that count? Well, we do know later in the game it counts trees. Does grass count? It's a living creature. Would that be every blade or just the entire, like... I'm probably thinking too far into this. <laughs> oh, well. There we go. We're set to revive the living and punish evil. A soul blazer. I guess I should also mention this is considered a, see, a prequel to uh, Illusion of Gaia. There's a few references in that one. Okay. That's enough of the intro. Uh, it's from an old save island. Let's go ahead and take that out. Ah, right. Okay, name. Well, I'm gonna go with the old name, too. Something about Bobber just makes me chuckle. Okay. Okay. We'll get back to the hub in a second. For now, though... Oh, there's the AC. Okay. First we get our weapon. You have to equip it. Okay. This is the crux of the game, to be honest. The little reddish-white flashing thing is basically a monster base. Similar installed to like Gauntlet and stuff like that. The idea is though it has a limited amount of enemies in it. So once you deplete it, it turns into the little green spot. You step on the green spot, and it will do something. Sometimes it brings somebody back. Sometimes it just opens up an area. This time I brought this little sorcerer back who's going to be joining us as a floating ball surrounding us. Uh, which does bring an interesting point. Magic comes from the ball, so... Oh, right, and those little gems. Enemies will drop the little orangey, yellowy, gold gem things. You use that for magic. And it's always important to remember the magic comes from that, but also that you can, like I'm doing right there, kind of push the orb by walking against the solid wall. You can use that to hit enemies who are out of reach. Okay. The hub consists of four shortcuts. Generally, the first area... Hmm. I guess there's no real general thing to it. This one here has that first opening room, but most of the levels will have, like, that first area be this the first town. Which, when you get there, is mostly empty. Such as this place. Okay. The flower recommends we go in here and kill monsters. So, that's what we're going to do. Okay. 
Yeah, there's not a lot to this, but um. Oh, right. If you hold R and L, you can actually attract gems to you. That's good because a lot of the bigger ones don't last very long. To be fair though, I don't think you ever need the gems for anything more than magic. So, you can do quite well without them. Still, having a little magic, it's always handy. Slash, slash, slash. There's just not much. This... That's kind of the one downfall of this game. Is so many times you're just sitting there waiting for every enemy to drop out of a base one at a time. I mean, don't get me wrong, it tickles the completionist in me. Ah, see, we just released a house. With a person in it, presumably. And that was always kind of the joy for this game, is taking a field of nothing and bringing everything back. It reminds me in a way of Okami. Another fantastic adventure game, by the way. It kind of got me into games where you restore everything. Dark Cloud. I actually played this before I played Act Razor. Well, even Minecraft to a sense of degree, I suppose. Starting with nothing. Not so much creative effort in this one, though. Dark Cloud lets you put stuff in different spots. Even though you kind of had to put them in the certain spots. This one here, yeah, everything's sort of preset. Slash up monsters. Get gems. And it makes you just wish they would all pop out of the thing at once, or pop out faster at least. It really slows this game down. Okay. Ah. The jewels. The jewels are important, as they usually give you experience. They also serve as warp points back to the surface. Or whatever primary area you happen to be in. See, it gives you the option. Okay, we're going to continue on. You notice I favor the right side of the swing where the sword kind of stops. I don't know if it's really any different, I just... I don't know, it feels like it hits harder. It might just be my imagination. It might be a literal thing of the sprite freezing for a second and technically hitting the enemy twice. Oh. At least these enemies are predictable. We got some later that just sort of bob around. Oh, so many enemies. Okay. This time we have unlocked a tool shop. Which is great, because that means we can get medical herbs now. For nothing. The chances are we'll probably find one before we have to go get one. Okay, uh, I told you I was kind of hoping it would be a medical herb. Okay. Rather elaborate for an underground thing. The sword? No, no, wait, the sewer lever comes later. I, I remember there's a lo another level of something more rightly called the sewer level. Okay, we could use armor, but we don't have any yet. Oh, there's my medical herb. Okay, see, these guys all popped out really quickly, so. I should mention the enemies, so there's some kind of pop out of nothing. I think it's something to do with like the uh, frame rate recording. You can see them when they appear. They just flash a lot, and I guess this uh, recording software is just sort of overlooking them. Okay, moving on. Ah, these guys shoot little projectiles to give them a little bit of difference uh, distance. Sorry. Okay. This is where I could use magic. I could push against the wall and make my orb appear. Uh, magic always fires in the direction you're facing. It's kind of why I prefer the second spell, which shoots in a cross pattern. One in every direction. Oh, got a bridge. Complete with its own little Jimmy Sakamoto. 
Okay. Oddly enough, these torch guys aren't attached to any sort of base, and they'll actually regenerate every time you... Anytime you hit a green spot that takes you out of this area, it makes you, uh... Brings anything back to the real world. Though you can if you clear out other, uh, other bases. So you clear out two bases, and they both open up some of the real world. You don't have to worry about the, the other base coming back. Unless you left, like, one enemy alive. So, if you have a chance to kill off a base, it's best to do it as soon as possible. Even if you can't reach the base itself yet. See, right there, I could have actually just stayed outside the field and been completely safe. Oh, well, never said that was perfect. There we go. This time we've got an ivy. Pretty much everything you release can talk, at least in some way or form, so... It's the trick of figuring out where their talk point is. Okay, another one of these guys. Never made it very far in Act Razor. I, I think I beat like the first level once or twice, but uh... This game gets hard so fast. Oh. Backtrack spot. Okay, go up the puddle. I think that means this is the last base we can reach at the moment. We'll find out in just a second. Could have had this out sooner, I suppose. I've been playing through Mass Effect Andromeda. I enjoy it. There was one bug that really annoyed me on a planet called Eladin. It was like a weird quest trigger that kills your uh, your car. But since it didn't trigger properly, uh, my car just broke down. And I ended up having to walk halfway across the map to leave. Only to realize the only way to fix the car was to come back and hit this very specific spot. I must have wasted like two hours and all thinking my game was busted and I was going to have to reload. Oh, I was mad. Okay, well, we've taken, we've saved some of the, uh, the town, so let's, let's go ahead and walk around and talk to the new people. Well, presumably the old people, but start with this really big house. Uh, yeah, the mill is the one we need to talk to to progress. But... Oh. Uh, sure. Mom! Second floor has your own. Including this talking walking chair. Uh, wa walking chair. Rocking chair. Not really anything to do here, but if you're hurt, you can come and talk to your new mother, and she'll revive you. Yeah, she only has medical herbs, but... Oh, yeah, I must have used mine. I didn't even notice. But you can come back as many times as you want to get it. Even from other areas. Because sometimes... Every area pretty much has, like, one thing that will give you medical herbs. But they can be released pretty late in the level sometimes. Okay. He wants to turn, let's turn the level so we can activate the elevator. And... Done. Okay. <sighs> Idiot. Oh yeah, real great. Shame about the owner though. Okay, moving back to the dungeon. I think this dungeon has two parts. We're about to go into the second part of it. And for this level, I believe there's just the painting, which we'll get to in a minute. And then the boss, and then we'll be done. Well, done with this area for now, I suppose. It's a bit early to mention it, but uh, there are enemies that you need a certain sword to kill. Now, I've only got the basic sword, obviously. But if memory serves, there's a metal sword for killing metal based monsters, and there is a spirit sword for killing 
spectral foes, certain spectral foes. At least an old man with brown hair. No, no, I feel like a Ponty, a Monty Python joke was like building there. Screw that. Uh, not because I don't like Monty Python, because I do, but overquoted. Okay, I, I should have grabbed that. Okay, um, got some fern things here. I will say that the monsters in the levels are unique. I don't recall running into a something in the later level that was just a recolor of an earlier enemy. And that's nice, you know. Oh, here's a good one. Just name the little and avoid the fireballs. Like I said though, you want to make sure both of these uh, bases are down. Otherwise you'll hit one and it'll just the other one will start... I'm trying to think of a good way to word that. If you don't finish off the base, whenever you go back, you, you like go to the screen, you see the house and the people come back. When you go back, the base is completely refilled. So if you kill seven enemies in an eight enemy base, and you jump out like that, that means next time you come back, whenever you come back from that uh, restore restoration screen, you've got to kill all eight again. Very annoying. Okay, don't really have to worry about the torch, guys. You can do it for gems, I suppose, but, uh... I, I can't say they're completely worthless. There's times when magic has been really helpful, but... Okay, these guys are all pretty much hemmed in, so we should be able to... Okay, got a good bit of the town back now. Ah, the architect. We want to talk to him when he gets back. He does something kind of neat. Okay, a few more blobs. Always oh, slimes. Hopefully, I can do this in one go without getting killed. Well, you do have to come back. I mean, we can't reach everything this first go. Oh, there was, have I picked up the dream rod yet? Probably. <laughs> the dream rod's an item in this game you use to go into people's dreams. And unlike a lot of games which basically we've mentioned that sort of thing once and let you forget about it, you use it quite a bit in this game. Anytime you run into anything that's sleeping, be it tree, bird, bug, you're going to want to use the dream rod to pop in there and see what's going on. Sometimes it's story related. Usually it's like a, it'll bring you to a spot with a hidden switch you can use to open up other areas. Which is the case here. There's actually a blocked off spot you can only get to through someone's dream. Okay. Killing some flies. Killing a lot of flies, actually. Very annoyingly, they, uh... I think you can press start to see how many monster bases are left. But to pad things out, they've basically created a spot here where you've got four bases, one in each corner. Each appears after the other one. And they've... You notice that one there. Well, to start, your basic base will release one enemy until you kill that enemy, in which case, then it'll release the other one. Then you have ones like these was released at a preset time. Like after a few seconds, it'll, re it'll release an enemy, take a few seconds, release another one. You'll see in this room here, that can be very slow to very fast. The first one was very slow. Killed the enemy, had to wait for it, the next one to pop up. Then you get to this one here, where they're all appearing really quickly. Which, naturally, we prefer because that means we can get to uh, work a lot faster. We can get the uh, cake taken out. Oh, and a lot of those guys. Okay. And finally, we've unlocked... A goat. As a... Okay. Can't be too many left. There's so many. There's this. Those were at the side of the map. 
Uh, let's see some slimes. Goblin things. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I'm level two. Oh, yeah, you actually have an experience level on this. Leveling up gives you more HP. Presumably more stats. Don't know on that for sure. Oh, dang it. Got careless. Oh, well, it's a good place to need to stop for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll pick up next time with the rest of that and the dungeon and the painting, which I guess I'll have to explain later.